President uh, Martin Schulz. Thank you for your address, President Schulz, for the support that you have expressed here this morning uh, for our national effort, uh, for your words uh, of encouragement uh, and uh, for uh, your inspiring thoughts. Your presence here in this chamber, Mr. President, on your first visit to Ireland since taking office uh, as President of the European Parliament and the exchange of views that we are having here this morning demonstrate the vital and complementary role that national parliaments and the European Parliament play in providing democratic oversight and accountability within the European Union. This role has never been more important as the European Union takes further steps towards closer integration in response to the crisis that we collectively face. It is a particular honour for me too to welcome a President of the European Parliament from the same broad political family and tradition, a tradition that has made an immense contribution to the development of the European Union over the decades. President Schulz, you have spoken of ensuring that solidarity and democracy take precedence over the rights of the more powerful, of reconciling the interests of smaller and larger states, north and south, east and west, putting the welfare of everyone above the vested interests of the few. And in doing so, you have spoken of an approach that does need to be reasserted at the heart of Europe. Can Corla, in less than 100 days, Ireland takes over the presidency of the Council of the European Union for the seventh time. As in the past, our focus will be on managing the business of the Council in an efficient, responsible and impartial manner and on representing fairly and openly the positions arrived at in Council. Given the scale of the challenges facing Europe today, we recognise the seriousness of the task and the Government is approaching it with determination. We also see the importance of demonstrating that each member state, whether large or small, can effectively discharge its responsibilities as presidency and that we can prove the continuing value and relevance of the community method of which you spoke, of decision making which has served us so well in the past. Since this country's last presidency in 2004, the European Union has undergone profound change. Most obviously, the Union has grown from 15 to 27 member states, soon to be 28, and operates in a wider and more complex environment. With the introduction of the Lisbon Treaty reforms, the legislative and budgetary responsibilities of the European Parliament have been significantly enhanced, and it is clear that the Presidency now plays a particular role in managing the relationship between the Council and the European Parliament. During our Presidency, Mr. President, we will be looking to you for your guidance, your goodwill and support as we work together in what promises to be a busy legislative programme. On our part, I can promise you that we will approach our relations with the Parliament in an open, constructive and cooperative spirit. Now more than ever, we need to show to our citizens that the European institutions can respond rapidly and effectively to their needs. Failure to do so, as you have said, will undermine the foundations of the European Union and the unique model of cooperation that we have developed over the past 50 years. We are taking on the presidency of the European Council at a very critical time. And as you have said, more needs to be done than just budgetary discipline in order to get our country and to get our continent out of the economic difficulties in which uh, we have found ourselves. And that is why the decisions, as you have said, which were made on the 29th of June, in particular decisions relating to the separation of bank and sovereign debt and decisions in relation to the compact for, for jobs and growth are so critically important. And in deciding our priorities for our presidency, our emphasis will be on those proposals which promote growth and employment in a community based on a spirit of solidarity. We need to provide jobs for those who are currently unemployment and those who will soon commence the search for employment. The Youth Transitions Package, which we ex expect to see published, 
by the Commission in December will offer an opportunity for Europe to focus in a practical way on an item that is sadly a feature at the top of both the Council's and the Parliament's agenda, and that, of course, is youth unemployment. We need to equip our young people with the skills that they need to take up the jobs of the future and to manage the transition into the workplace. There is hardly an issue that can be more important for Europe, for its institutions and for its member states than to try to help our young people to realise their potential and in collectively pushing back against the wasted capacity that unemployment, including youth unemployment, represents. And that is why I would say to the young woman that you met, President, the young architect and, and psychologist, who, like so many more young people, are fearful and doubtful about, uh, about their future, that come the 1st of January next year, this country, which has experienced the consequences of what happened as a result of the economic crash, which too has so many young people who are not reaching their potential and who are worried about their future, that our priority will be to ensure that youth unemployment is at the top of the European uh, agenda. So you can be assured that Ireland's presidency of the European Union next year will not be an exercise in technocratic management. Ireland's presidency of the European Union next year will be to provide leadership within the European Union on the issues that matter to our people and particularly the issue of youth unemployment that you have addressed uh, so uh, eloquently here this morning. There are a range of measures under the Europe 2020 strategy which we will seek to advance. We will work to strengthen the single market, to remove the barriers which hinder its huge potential for growth and jobs. We will promote the digital agenda and attach particular importance to the development of Horizon 2020, the EU's next framework programme for research and innovation. Only by becoming a leader in research and innovation can we hope to compete in a highly competitive global environment and to create smart and sustainable employment. An area where we see potential for greater contribution to growth and to jobs, and one which we think will feature significantly during our presidency, is the EU's external trade agenda, including the key EU-US trade relationship. In April of next year, we will host a meeting of trade ministers in Dublin to consider this relationship and how to strengthen and deepen it. Our presidency will unfold against the continuing backdrop of the worst financial and economic crisis the Union has faced since its foundation. We will work assiduously to advance the proposals that are now being elaborated to deepen our economic and monetary union, convinced that it is only by closer cooperation and mutual solidarity that we can overcome the problems we face. We will seek to ensure that the range of measures for improved economic governance that have already been adopted are fully implemented. In doing so, it is worth reminding ourselves what is at stake. This is not being done to please ratings agencies or market managers. We are doing this in order to restore macroeconomic stability to our economies, to rebuild our competitiveness and to create the conditions for sustainable growth, high, high employment and shared prosperity. In order to achieve our goals, the European Union needs a budget that is adequate to the task. We are supportive of the proposal that has been put forward by the Commission. We note that there is a wide variety of views, including, of course, those of the European Parliament. We remain confident that agreement can be reached on the multi-annual financial framework during the Cyprus presidency, and we look forward to that uh, agreement being reached at the November European Council. We are ready to take forward this range of necessary legislative proposals to cover the 2014 to 2020 budgetary period. This has implications for all areas of EU activity, including the vital areas of the common agricultural policy and cohesion policy. Again, we recognise and respect the role that the European Parliament has in this process, and we will work together with the Parliament to ensure outcomes that are of real benefit to the people uh, of Europe. Mr. President, you have spoken eloquently today and on many occasions of the European Union as a community of solidarity and of the need in the current crisis for courage and imagination. Here in Ireland you will find many people who share your vision and who will work with you for a better Europe. I look forward to your return to Ireland in November when we will discuss in some more detail the priorities for our presidency, how we can work with you and with the European Parliament to realise them.